With the first installment of Denis Villeneuve's highly anticipated two-part adaptation of Frank Herbert's Dune on its way, I have been exploring the unique characters and elements that make up this fascinating universe. Having already covered many of the central figures that will be featured in this film, I'd like to explore one of the more fascinating and influential powers that exist in the known universe, the bizarre, isolationist society known as the Bene Tleilax. The setting of Dune takes place thousands of years into mankind's future, after a great war known as the Butlerian Jihad, which resulted in the banning of machines that were formed in the likeness of a human mind. With this restriction, humans had to use other methods in order to make advances in the human condition. The Sisterhood of the Bene Gesserit dedicated themselves to studying and learning how to gain supreme control and seemingly superhuman mastery over their bodies. The navigators of the Spacing Guild relied heavily on the spice melange, which would mutate them and grant them prescience, enabling them to see and chart safe paths through space, allowing for successful interstellar navigation with the aid of Holtzman engines. There were also those who were trained to be Mentats, which were essentially humans that were developed as a replacement to the computers and thinking machines that have been outlawed. The Bene Tleilax, or the Tleilaxu as they were more commonly called, are a xenophobic society located on the planet Tleilax. These religious zealots are dominated by a strict hierarchy focusing their efforts on genetic manipulation and the pursuit of spiritual elevation through physical refinement, with their ultimate goal being the domination of the known universe. Interestingly, their culture and spiritual ideology is highly suggestive of extreme male chauvinism, which stands in contrast to the perceived extreme female chauvinism of the Sisterhood of the Bene Gesserit. The questionable customs and ethics of the Bene Tleilax have long been considered repulsive to the other cultures of the known universe, and are generally distrusted. This is largely because their products, though desirable, push the moral limits of what is considered acceptable by humanity at large. These products typically result from extensive physiological and physical manipulation of human life. In the universe of Frank Herbert's Dune exists an organization called the Combine Onet Ober Advancer Mercantiles, or CHOM for short. This corporation largely controls all economic affairs across the universe and relies heavily on the Spacing Guild for transport. The Bene Tleilax have been able to ensure their survival through the ability they've acquired to trade through Chome in order to supply goods that are in heavy demand, such as artificial eyes and synthetic meat replacements, which are called slicks. Some of the most fascinating biological products of the Tleilaxu come from their exlotal tanks, which were living organisms used for their genetic creations. It was suspected by the Bene Gesserit that these exlotal tanks were all that remained of the female Tleilaxu, since no females of their race had ever been seen. These tanks are the means by which the Bene Tleilax are able to manufacture two different creations known as golas and face dancers. A gola is an artificially created human replicated from a dead individual. These organisms were created in exlotal tanks and could be reconstructed from as little as one cell from the original being. Although very similar to a clone, there are some key differences, one being that a true gola is grown from cells collected from the original human only after it had died. This is in contrast to a clone which is grown from cells that are still living, and as such do not possess a death memory. Golas were created to provide comfort for people from the grief they experienced after the loss of someone close. However, this relief was limited because the Golas typically did not remember anything from their original lives. The Tleilaxu had long theorized that it was indeed possible to reawaken a Gola's original memories through the concept of genetic memory, which the Bene Gesserit's Reverend Mothers had long since been able to access through their spice agony ritual. Some evidence to support this theory was that Golas could experience echoes of their past life, namely feelings which were triggered by certain sounds or smells. This would be explored further by the Bene Tleilax in later books, and even involved some of the main characters of Frank Herbert's first Dune novel. Another creation of the Tleilaxu geneticists are called Face Dancers. These were bred for their ability to mimic and take on the physical appearance of other individuals. Their name is derived from the fact that whenever these beings change shape, 
their faces would appear to dance as the flesh moved. While face dancers were neither male nor female, they had the ability to take on the physical sex of the individual they were copying. This made them a very popular choice to fill a variety of roles inside the Imperium, including spies and assassins. The Tleilaks could employ a face dancer to replace whoever they wanted, and some of these imposters acted successfully for many years. Typically, face dancers can mimic individuals to an almost perfect level of precision, but the use of these creatures was not infallible. One weakness was that they were detectable by adept members of the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood due to a subtle odor emitted by their pheromones. Another limitation in the use of face dancers was that in certain instances, if they had been acting in a certain role for an extended period of time, the imposter would become delusional and begin to believe that they were in fact the person they were mimicking. When this happened, the face dancer would fall completely outside the control of the Bene Tleilax. While Golas and face dancers did not have any significant involvement in the story of Frank Herbert's first book, another creation of the Tleilax who did, namely the twisted mentat of House Harkonnen, Pyder de Vries, an effeminate, psychopathic killer in the employ of House Atreides' enemies. As previously mentioned, mentats are humans that have been trained at certain schools to mimic computers. As such, they possess impressive cognitive and analytical abilities. Twisted mentats like Pyder de Vries originated from the planet Tleilax and were largely tailored via genetic engineering to fit the needs of a customer's requirements. Because of this, they varied in body structure, emotional, and psychological composition. Normal mentat training typically utilized and was able to benefit from an individual's natural characteristics. However, Tleilaxu mentats typically displayed artificially produced characteristics. They were also designed to operate outside the ethical framework which normal mentats were trained to work in. As such, twisted mentats were able to hypothesize, strategize, and calculate trends free of any ethical restraints or limitations. Like other products of the Bane Tleilax, mentats produced by the Tleilaxu came to be regarded universally as objects of repugnance, since they were so often warped and bizarre in nature. However, their skills were so in demand that this disdain of their nature did not affect their usage. In fact, twisted mentats were often trusted with the secrets of the great houses they served. In the case of Pyder de Vries, had his bizarre disposition affected his reliability, it is highly unlikely that he would gain the trust and confidence of the cunning and perceptive Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. The Bene Tleilax play a larger role in Herbert's sequel Dune books, and so I believe it is doubtful that we'll see or hear about them in Villeneuve's adaptation. However, knowing of their workings and their place in Herbert's universe certainly can help the viewer or reader more fully understand the reasons why a character like Pyder exists. But I'm curious to know what you think of the Bene Tleilax. Are there any other organizations or elements of Frank Herbert's universe you'd like to see covered on this channel? Let me know in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy content. Thank you all so much for your support. And as always, have a very nerdy day.